Hello booktube, my name is Kate, this is my channel Chapter Kate. Today I'm going to be doing my, what month is it? September. I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. This month I only read seven books um, and then I, there's two that I'm not done with. Two of my books are super super small, kind of like novella type things and then one of them's a chunk. First book that I read is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is an adult science fiction I want to say because it's like superpowers and junk. Um, it's very like parallel to Frankenstein, like the main character is Victor, there's some business with shocky stuff and dying and reliving, re... What is that word? Reviving. Reviving. So, all that. So there's a lot of parallels with Frankenstein in this book, and I really, really like it. Um, his name is Victor Vale, is the main character, and basically everybody, you know, when they die and come back, they develop certain abilities, and that's, like, the main premise of the novel. So, it's good. Vengeful just came out, the sequel, and I bought two copies. So. But, um, I gave it five stars because it's five stars worth. Mainly because it was just, it's a lot of action, um, there's a lot in to kind of enjoy in there. Um, there's a, I love anything that has like supernatural abilities and things like that, it's all cool to me. Especially if they can like make up their pseudoscience that I enjoy in this. And I loved the parallels to Frankenstein because Frankenstein is one of my favorite books. And I also really enjoyed um, just how easy it was, the pacing. To read it. One thing I will say just going in is kind of a trigger warning for a lot of self-harm. It's not done as like a coping mechanism you know because of depression or something like that. It's done more because of you know curiosity, scientific curiosity, but if self-harm is something that does trigger you in any way I just would be prepared for that while you're reading it because it does have a lot of that and I knew it, it was like just a little bit hard to get through that those parts for me but um yeah. Yas. The next is a novella, and this is Minority Report by Philip K. Dick. Uh, I watched this movie when I was, like, really young, probably younger than I should have watched this movie. Um, but this is a, I have it, I think we have it in a book of short stories by him, but I'm not really sure. Um, but this version looks like a little notebook, and it's, like, set up like a little notebook. And the text is really big, and it's a very quick read. So I went through that. And if you don't know what Minority Report is, it's kind of a futuristic society where they have these three sort of people, but they're not, like, very aware. They basically, like, created these three people. I'm not sure if it was, like, in a lab or what. I'm not really sure how that works. But there are these three beings um, that they kind of created to predict, like, major crimes before they happen. They also predict like small crimes, but those don't really get attention. And basically, if someone's going to murder someone, they predict it and then they sort of pre-arrest the person. So there's that. And crime really dropped when this happened. Um, but basically, since there's three of the beings, um, they, you know, they might predict, two of them might predict that this guy's going to kill his wife and one might predict that he's not going to kill his wife and so the one that he's not going to predict kill his wife or whatever that prediction is actually called the minority report because it's not likely as likely to happen because only one of them predicted it versus two it's a lot of stuff and then one of the guys that's working there gets accused of he might kill somebody and it's this whole thing so it's a little mind-blowing and if you haven't seen the movie you should see that movie because it's starring some dude that i forgot his name so it's starring tom cruise and his middle tooth so you should definitely watch. Next is Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. Oh no, I messed the corner of this all up. I messed it up when I dropped everything before I turned the camera on. Oh, it's okay. I didn't really like this book much anyway. Uh, oh, Minority Report I gave it four. I didn't talk about that, but I gave it four stars. Okay, so the next book is Shatter Me, um, which I did not really like very much. I think I only gave it three stars um, because it was readable. And it had elements that I enjoyed, but it, uh, altogether I just didn't like it that much. Uh, the main character, basically, what is her name? Juliet. The main character's name is Juliet, and I hate her. She stresses me out. She has a lot of problems, which is fine. Whatever. All books, the characters have problems. But in this book, the writing style kind of reflects where her mind's at in the story, which that part I liked. I liked that, and I liked the very like metaphorical way that things were written because I think a lot in metaphors and I find that metaphors help me explain things so I like when I see that in a book. A lot of people don't like that and that was a lot of people's main complaint. No, my main complaint was just because she was so on edge so much in this book that I felt myself getting emotionally exhausted just reading it because it was just always on edge and I just couldn't 
and I understand. I've 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 lived life on the edge, not on the edges, and I'm doing bungee jumps. I'm scared to get my ears pierced, but like I've lived life feeling like oh, I'm on the edge all the time, and so I understand that. But reading it made me tired, like very very tired. Um, on top of that, because that's not actually my main gripe with this. My main gripe is the main character is literally the only female in the entire book for some reason. It's not really explained why that is. There's they mentioned her mom at one point, like for a sentence, but she's not actually in the book. And they mentioned two ladies somewhere near the end. They mentioned them being two old ladies. And that's all that you really get from them. You don't, there's, she's just the only woman and there's no explanation for it. So there's a lot of spoilers that I'm not going to go into for why I don't like this. It's like, oh, this guy's special, but so is this guy. And it's just, I just, eh. Oh, on top of this, which I'm counting as another book, an individual book, there's a novella in the back of it, Destroy Me, which is from one of the bad guys in this book's point of view. And I also didn't like that because it's like in this one, he's a bad guy. He's bad. He's just bad. And then in the novella, it's like, but he actually did this. But he's not actually that bad because he did this. And it's like, I, do, I just can't. It's like it's just erasing all the mistakes he made in the first thing. And I don't feel like you should have to read the novella to have that insight to the person. I don't know, man. I just, no. They both got three stars. I don't know if I'm going to continue the series or not. Some people say it gets better near, like, the fourth book. But I don't feel like you should have to read three books to get to the good part. Okay, so the next book is... City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is a paranormal middle grade book with a little girl who basically dies and this ghost pulls her back over from the side so she, she has like one foot in the afterlife and one foot in the just life, just plain life, I don't know. So she can see ghosts and she can cross into the veil where all the ghosts live and her and her ghost friend are, you know, just going on their merry way about things. Her parents are ghost hunters so it's basically like Danny Phantom but different because her parents aren't like trying to like suck the ghosts up in a vacuum or anything. They're just trying to see them and her mom's very flighty and excited and her dad's very logic based like let me explain this with science and it's it's a great and they had they get like a TV show so they go to Edinburgh which is supposed to be like a super ghost city and it causes some problems as you might imagine but it was really great it was really easy and quick to read. Um, apparently there's going to be a sequel so I'm excited about that. For some reason though I personally felt that the cat would be more involved in the story because the cat somehow made it under the cover. But the cat's not really involved in the story and I felt somewhat slighted by that. I gave this five stars because it's everything that a middle grade book needs to have. And it definitely gave me like some serious Coraline vibes while I was reading it. Um, kind of giving... It's, it's creepy. I like creepy middle grade. Um, it's also... You have to deal with like the parents not quite knowing everything that's going on and the main character having to be really really brave in a situation where I definitely would have peed my pants. So next was the Green Ribbon Book Club's book of the month and it was Eliza and Her Monsters. We're going to be doing a live show of this on October 3rd at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I don't know when this video is going up and it'll be me, Sarah, and Leah Jane. But yeah, that'll, that'll happen soon. And we're going to talk all about it, and it's going to be great. But Eliza and Her Monsters is about this girl who is, like, famous for a webcomic. She has millions of viewers uh, and subscribers, readers, whatever you call them, to her webcomic. And she has an entire personality online, which I totally relate to. And she doesn't really have any social life at all or any interaction with her family or any friends or anything like that offline. Um... But then there's a new boy that comes to school, and he's, like, a big fan of her webcomic. And she has to somehow, you know, learn to be social. And no one knows about her webcomic in real life. And she has to, like, somehow find ways to meld it. But the, the kicker is that she's got really, really, really bad anxiety. And so she's trying to deal with, you know, having anxiety, being in high school, and being a famous webcomic creator. Which is just a little bit, a little bit much on someone's plate. Like, I feel like even if you didn't have anxiety, that would be a lot. But... So, it's really great mental illness representation. I found there's a lot that I related to um, on the anxiety side of things and on the having internet friends side of things. Um, but it's it's just a good book. I don't really like contemporaries that much, but with my Green Ribbon Book Club, I found that most books that have mental illness representation are contemporary books. And um, ones that actually call it what it is. And I, so, but I am, I keep hitting myself in the glasses with this book. But, ow, I just did it again. Um, but I found this book also had some, like, a fluffy aspect that I thought was really cute. And I usually don't 
care about relationships and books at all. I just really don't care. But in this one, I actually found myself rooting for them and just, I love it. But it has really great anxiety representation. has great um, um, child survivors of parents who have committed suicide representation. And it's great. It's got um, selective mutism um, representation. And I gave it a five stars because... I'm gonna have a concussion from hitting myself in the head. The next book is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, and this is the last book that I completed. I completed it today during the live show for it um, in the Big Buddy Readathon, the Big Bra Book Club. My foot's asleep. Basically, this book is about Laszlo, who's a librarian, and he's told stories of this magical place and then all of a sudden he forgets the name of it and everybody that ever knew the name of it calls it Weep because the name of the place has been sort of stripped from everybody's mind. He goes through a lot of struggles and then there are these people who are basically like half God that um, have all these cool powers. It's really hard to explain this book because there's just so much to it. Um, Lynn Taylor's writing style is very, um, I get it, okay, it's not, I wouldn't say it's purple prose, but it's very flowery and uses a lot of metaphor and a lot of flowery sort of descriptions. I don't know. So sometimes it's kind of hard to get a gra grasp on exactly what things look like and what they are and you know what's happening because of that but I find that I really enjoy it because the way it's written reminds me of a dream like there are points where she points out certain like details but not it's hard to get a whole picture and focus in your mind and it's kind of like a dream when you have a dream you usually remember certain symbols but not like all the details of you know the environment and things like that so I really liked the way she wrote this and I gave it five stars so and then I have two books that I'm currently reading and have been for a while because I am slow Despacito. the first one is blood of elves and this is the first like actual book in the richer witcher series it's not I've read the two short story prequels but this is the first actual book in the series and I've been listening to this in audiobook forever in my car and I sort of lost my place on the audiobook somehow I don't know what happened there and so now I gotta find it again but I'm, I'm not too far from the end on that I just don't quite know where I am and I lost it and I'm very stressed and then the last book that I'm still currently reading is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury this is a piece of speculative fiction it's a classic it's kind of dystopian all that good stuff basically they burn books because if you read books your mind is opened to new things and new ideas and they're scared of that it's good so far i really really like the way the writing style the way it's written i like this kind of classic um like 1984 things like that i really like the writing style of these kind of classics um so i might finish this today but who knows it will be on my next month's wrap up hopefully if i finish it but that's all the books that i read for the month of september or began reading in the month of september it was not a bad reading month i was just very stressed and busy this month so i didn't get as much read as i wanted to um yeah plus strange the dreamer took a whole week for me so and now it's time for a booktuber spotlight Okay, so my booktube spotlight for today is going to be Richmond Reader. Um, she's a fairly new booktuber. She only has like 16 subscribers at the moment, but she is so funny. I watched um, her Do I Have That Book Tag video where she's like running around herself trying to find things, but her personality is just great, and she's going to grow really fast in the community. I can just already tell, um, but you should definitely go check her out because she makes me laugh a lot. So that's all I have for this video. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night. I feel the soldiers coming, I'm pulling up a fight. I feel